Good morning, guys. Uh, it's an honor for me to introduce you to a well-renowned uh, additional commissioner officer who is uh, Sri Vai Satyanarayana, sir. He was an uh, additional commissioner officer in commercial taxes. Uh, in to the, he got retired from the service in 2016. And he's also a Group A officer, uh, worked as an IOFS officer in central government uh, in the batch of 1984 civil services. He also got an IPS rank, but due to technical reasons, he stayed as Group A officer. And coming to his academic excellence, he was a uh, he studied uh, literature graduation in Hyderabad Central University and got a PG diploma in communicative English in also Hyderabad Central University. He is a well-renowned writer who has uh, wrote four books. That is Namakam Niku Namaskaram, Ashtanga Margam To. Yakita Vikasam, Markula Vyuham, Telugu Sahityam to IAA Sadin Chalante. These are well renowned and well versed books written by him. If you are interested, you can go through them. And he also has an experience of training uh, many IAS officers, IPAs officers uh, at Sardar Vallabhai Patel Police Academy and National Academy for Direct Taxes, Nagpur, and uh, Nasan at Hyderabad, Vizak, and Bangalore. So you can have a, a guidance support from him also whenever you are interested. And then he also has been conducted a number of workshops and seminars on personal development, personal effectiveness to the youth, to the colleges, coaching institutions, universities, hostels, governments, and other training courses throughout India. He also uh, is working on a couple of other institutes and conducting workshops, trainings, and uh, other programs. Uh, his awards are Certificate of Commendation and Cash Award by Honorable Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh and Certificate of Commendation from the Honorable Ministers of Commercial Taxes. Four times he received the award. And he received Certification of Commendation from the years 2001 to 2002. And he also got a Best Performer Award, VAT Study 2, to Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, and Indonesia. He also uh, confirmed Pride of the Nation Award by the All India Achievers Conference at Mumbai. So his motto is pay back to the society and adopts the way of give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, teach him how to fish, you feed him for a life. So this is his motto. So today he is uh, here to uh, give you some guidance on ethics and essay paper. So any doubts or queries, you can uh, ask him. You can have his guidance. Thank you very much. Nothing but you. You are going to discover yourself. This, in fact, is a subject which makes you to rediscover yourself. And at the same time, you can also score very highly in the civil services. I'm thankful to Sosin Ma'am for this opportunity to meet you all. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a bird's eye view on the subject called ethics and essay. At the end of this presentation, roughly maybe one and a half hours, then you can ask me any questions if you want to get any clarifications. My pleasure to answer you. So what I'm going to do, yeah, this is about the roadmap of the presentation on ethics. What I would like to share with you is this. Ethics, a game changer. That means it may take you to the top or it may bring you to the bottom. Ethics, what exactly is ethics? Why did the UPSC introduce ethics in the civil services? It was introduced from 2013. It's a new subject comparatively eight years ago. What is expected from the aspirants? Because civil services, they got some expectations, especially the UPSC. It is expecting something from you. What exactly is being expected from you? Then what is the content of the ethics? What exactly you have to study? And what is that they are going to test? And how is it being tested? So you will be tested, as I told you, it is not the subject they want to test, it is uh, you they want to test. Then what is the impact of ethics uh, paper? So impact means the 
influence on different different factors which I am going to uh, discuss with you. And uh, what you are going to learn is something new which is not available with other people. So what is there something new we are going to discuss here. So that is about the ethics point of view. Then from essay I will come back. So first let us uh, go with uh, ethics. Now as I told you this is a game changer. You know Visakha Yadav, she got 162 marks in ethics paper. You can see 162 in ethics paper. She got the sixth rank. If you take away normally ethics 110 is the general mark. If you had she got only 110, where would she be? Maybe in group A services. But she got 162 highest you can see anywhere except in this that is called personality test 190 she got 162. In paper number one gender studies she got 102 paper 2, 121, paper 3, 93. But paper number 4, in fact, she fetched her IS. Okay, so that's called the game changers. So one subject is enough to change your selection, change your service. Like that ethics is also going to change your uh, fight, that's what I can say. Another important aspect, of course, I would like to tell you here is about uh, Pradeep Singh, who got the highest marks in the civil services, ultimately became the topper. He got uh, 157. In uh, 19, that was a very interesting year where ethics gave more marks compared to the essay paper. So, friends, remember this is a game changer. If you are clear about uh, what is required from you for the ethics paper, then it's going to give you very, very good results. What exactly is ethics? So that we can understand here. Uh, when I ent uh, attended my first interview, that is in uh, 83, so 84 I attended the interview in the April month, the member of the entry board asked a question. The question is, he told me that, gentlemen, I'm going to give you two dates. Give me the significance of the two dates. And choose one date and give me why you want to select that date. So he gave two dates. One is on 15th of August, 1947. The other is called the 26th January. 1950. We know pretty well the importance of these two dates. So I told them. So he told me that, uh, tell me which date do you like? I said, sir, both dates are important. Then he said, you know pretty well both are important. But he tell me which date is very important according to you. So I had to choose between those two. Then I told him, sir, I would like to go by this date, 26 January 1950. He pounced on me and said, uh, and told me, why don't you like 15th of August? Don't you know that without 15th of August, we cannot get 26th of January? I said, I too agree, sir. But you asked me to select one date. So that's the reason I selected this date. And I will give the reason why, as to why I select this date. I told him, sir, the first for the first of the, in the annals of Indian history, we proclaimed our jails that we are all equal. Second, many countries got independence, but India is the only country which is maintaining the democratic fabric. Other countries, some of the countries, they relapsed into dictatorships. So, this is very important. For me, this date is very important. Now the question is, is it merely the dates he is asking? No. 
we must understand these are the not the dates what uh, he is asking is i have to choose between two principles what are the principles i have to choose a principle between equality and liberty liberty is called the independence we got on on 15th of august 1947 and we proclaimed ourselves equal on 26 january so for me equality is more important okay so this is a difference between uh, what i can say choosing it is not mere dates it is to choosing between two principles two principles are very important equality is important and the liberty is important so you cannot say both are not important both are important but as an administrator you have to choose between two important uh, principles ethics means you are not just going to differentiate between good and bad you are going to differentiate between good versus good so good versus good is very very important so it is not easy to take such a decision because both are equal important but uh, between these two important aspects in other words it is uh, easy is it is it to choose between good versus good good versus bad is it to choose but good versus good is not easy to choose it is what is known as ethical decision making when you take a decision you have to always choose between good versus good that is what is known as ethics normally you are going to differentiate between good versus bad it's any layman can do that a computer can do it a robot can do it but good versus good can be done by only human beings okay so this is what we can call is it ethics okay uh why ethics is introduced in civil services this is very important why the ethics is important in the civil services remember earlier when we were preparing there was no subject called ethics no subject called essay writing but they were introduced later essay was introduced in 19 uh, 93 and ethics was introduced in 2013 why they were introduced experience has shown that uh, the contemporary society has witnessed a declining standards of ethics and integrity among the civil servants so the falling ethical standards have led to the disastrous impact on the society the adverse impact of corruption is is uh, felt in every aspect of administration and society and finally the introduction of ethics subject so ethics was introduced basically to see they want to revamp the entire system itself so they attempt to revamp the new generation of the civil servants earlier it is thought that uh, candidates can be selected based on their merit they can be taken and they can be given training they can be changed but the experience show has shown that uh, it is very difficult to change a person you cannot change you cannot change your uh, even your sister or brother your parents cannot change you you cannot change your parents if at all you can change you can change yourself that's it so the upsc has observed that we cannot change boys and girls so it's better always to take the people who have got already the training in the ethics that's the reason they are asking you to get yourself trained before you come to the civil services so you have to first to train yourself and suit yourself into the civil services okay so this is the a uh, intention why the subject is introduced here now what does the ups expect from the candidates what is that that's being expected from you what they expect is attitude and your approach what is your attitude what is your approach and whether you can have the problem solving approach most of the people they add problems to the administration but you must suit out of the problems you must solve the problems so they want the people who have the attitude to solve the problems okay from this these are the very important aspects which are being uh, uh, 
studied by the UPSC. Uh, what exactly is required for the civil services? This is very important and this is from, from the horse mouth. This is by the chairman of the UPSC. He has given what exactly is required from a civil servant. Most of you are preparing for the civil services with an intention of getting service. But most of the people are not aware as to what is being expected from them. If you want a fish, you go to a pond and you put a bait and you get the fish. You go to the pond and call the fish, 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 come, come. Will it come? No. You have to put a bait. Okay? So that is, uh, you must understand what the fish needs from you. That's more important. Like that, you must also understand what the UPS is expecting from you. And this we can learn from the words of the chairman of the UPSC. He says, firstly, an officer is a gentleman. He should be a gentleman. What do we mean by the gentleman? He should possess good character qualities. You see, the first word you must always understand, character qualities. You must have good character, first of all. He should have courage of conviction. What exactly is courage of conviction? That means you must be very strong in your ideas and you are not going to change them. By the wind, you are not going to change. You are not going to go by the convenience. But courage of conviction is more important. Intellectual and moral capabilities, leadership qualities, and capable of taking the right decisions at the right time. So you should have in-depth professional knowledge, self-thinking, good communication skills, analytical in his thinking, flexible and not rigid, must be able to inspire and motivate his colleagues and his uh, subordinates. These, there should be balance of judgment in decision making. So two qualities are very, very important. One thing is about your character. The character depends on your uh, moral capabilities, courage of conviction, and you must also have the leadership qualities. That's one part. The second part is about your uh, professional knowledge, in-depth understanding of the professional knowledge. If you want to make it as very simple, then what exactly is required are two important aspects. The leadership is very, very important. The leadership can be measured by two qualities. One is called the competence. The other is called the character. These two are very vital, crucial for civil services. They're vital not only for the civil services, they're vital for any person. You must emerge as a leader. To emerge as a leader, what you require is a competence is required and a character is required. So the UPSC wants to test what exactly you have to present yourself. Now tell me what is competence? Anybody can give the meaning of the word called competence? What exactly is competence? Competence can be measured by three yardsticks. Number one, you must have the knowledge. You must have the knowledge. Knowledge means it's not mere data. It's not mere information. You need to have the knowledge. From knowledge, you are going to deduce the principles. That's called the wisdom. So you have to develop the knowledge. The knowledge is to be applied. The applied knowledge is known as the skill. And you must have the attitude, attitude to make this knowledge more workable. So these are the three qualities which are very much important to make you as a competent person. Remember, we got a lot of people. India is the third largest, uh, what I can say, the scientific manpower in India, in the world. 
and our people, our population is more than 140 crore population. Most of the people are very intelligent. So we got the competence. There is no death for competence. But what's more important is called the character. So how can we measure character? How can we say this is what is known as character? Character cannot be found or may be seen with the naked eye. How to, you have to understand this is what is known as the character. So how can we say this man is character oriented? How, the, how does the UPSC will come to know that you are a character oriented person? Though it is very tough, but it's uh, not difficult to measure. Character can be measured by three aspects again. This is by integrity. We go by integrity. What exactly is integrity? Integrity is doing the right thing when nobody is watching you. So they are going to see your intellectual integrity. Intellectual integrity can be paused or gauzed by how we are going to give your answers. For example, you are not aware of the answer, but you want to bluff the board, stating, thinking that uh, they are not aware of the answer. But if you start bluffing, they will see through and they will come to the conclusion, oh, this boy or girl is not fit to the civil services. So what's more important is you must have integrity. Intellectual integrity is very much important. Number two, you must have the maturity. What exactly is maturity? Maturity is the courage of conviction one side and the consideration for others is the other side. If both are combined together, it is known as maturity. So if you say that he's a matured boy, what does it mean? Matured boy means he got the courage of conviction, that means he's very strong in his own use, and at the same time, he's not a biased person, he's going to look into the views of other people. That is called consideration for the views of others. If both are combined together, that is known as the maturity. The third one is called abundance mentality. Abundance mentality means you are optimistic, welcoming the future, and you are not uh, say stopping any progressive issues. If you have these three aspects, then we can easily say that this man is character oriented. So what's more important for civil services is competence on site but more than competence, what is important is called the character. Okay, so basing on these two, competence, character, the syllabus of the civil services is designed. It's designed basing on the competence and the character. For example, in paper number one in the preliminary examination, paper two in the preliminary examination, if you can see, paper number one is totally, it is, uh, information oriented. They don't want to see your face, they want to see your knowledge base. Okay, paper number two, apart from the, uh, what I can say, the arithmetical aspects are the numerous, etc., but the rest of the components are very important. So they are very crucial, unfortunately, but these are not coming in the examination because of certain issues comprehension, decision making, problem solving, communication skills, interpersonal relations, all are relating to your personality and your character. Earlier, they used to test your decision making, some six to eight bits they used to give. But now, they are not giving here, and the comprehension also, mostly it is on inference they're focusing, but the communication skills, interpersonal relations, etc., are not being asked. UPSC has given the syllabus but not testing you on these components. It's unfortunate because most of the people, they thought that uh, English language components are not required, stating that uh, is English is a very tougher language. But somehow the paper too is made as a qualifying in paper, qualifying in nature, but this is very, very crucial, very crucial. The designing of the paper is not properly done by the UPSC. So there is a reform which is required, may come in the future. But what I want to say is paper number one is regarding your competency, paper number two mostly is regarding your character. 
So coming to the uh, main examinations, in the main examination you can see the essay paper. There are two types of essays are given, that's called the section A, section B. In section A, these uh, in 2020, you might have seen the paper, these are relating to your uh, character because they relate to the ethics aspects, they relate to the values, they relate to uh, what we can say the interpersonal relations. The paper B, that's called the section B this time they have given, mostly relating to the issues which are there, which are the problems, the challenges of the society. So that way, uh, essay number one generally, it's a fact-oriented competence has been tested. Other is called the opinion-oriented, your character is tested. So both are being tested in the civil services essay paper. If you can see paper, other papers, uh, especially paper number four, that is called ethics, you find here ethics, values, attitude, aptitude, emotional intelligence, etc. they're all relating to what? Character. Ethics paper is totally about the character and your problem solving approach. Okay, so there you need not go for any information. Apart from the general common sense, you are going to utilize your experiences to solve these problems. Okay, so Paper number four is about uh, the, uh, what I can say, the personality. And in the case of the interview or the personality test, what are being tested in there? They are going to test your emotional competence, balance of judgment, comprehension, and decision making. They're all coming under, the, again, the character. So what we observed is that uh, the UPSC wants the people with uh, competency and character. Now how it is being tested? You can see the syllabus given by the UPSC in the ethics paper. The syllabus gives, is given in the ethics paper is relating to what? Relating to your attitude, relating to your value system, relating to ethics, values and ethics in public administration, the great uh, role models in the form of the leaders, administrators, reformers, thinkers, philosophers. Okay, so the entire paper is nothing but the personality oriented components are given there. So the syllabus is regarding to that. And the other important aspect when we see this, how the questions are being asked in the civil services. The questions are asked basing on what? Basing on your character again. And the Case studies. Case studies also, it shows your balance of, balanced approach. Uh, so, basing on these things, the entire paper is divided into two parts. The paper number one, that's called section A, relates to the questions relating to the theory, and pap, uh, section B relating to the case studies. Average you get uh, 13 questions. If, if you can see the last four years, 13 questions are asked in theory. That comes in uh, question number e, 1A, B, 2A, B, like that. So, but if you can count them, they come around to 13. And you have to write uh, 150 words each. That means you are going to write around 1950 words here and here you have to write, uh, so six case studies, average six case studies, and the 20 marks each, you have to write 250 words. 3,400 words is the maximum word limit given by the UPSC, but nobody can write 3,450 words. You have to write around the 3,000 words. And you know the case studies are longer and the questions are bigger. When you read this, you have to absorb, you have to find out what exactly is required, and you have to put the answers and the, uh, 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 to the questions. So friends, remember, my proposition as for the ethics is concerned, it is not merely for acquisition of the knowledge, acquisition of the information. You have to 
acquire the information or the knowledge as per the syllabus, but more importantly, how to discover yourself or equip yourself with the lots of inputs in your character building. I'm going to show you a, a couple of questions which are given by the UPSC. This is a question came in 2014-3A. It says, integrity without knowledge is a weak and useless. Integrity without knowledge is a weak and useless, but knowledge without integrity is a dangerous and dreadful. What exactly do we mean by this? Quote. Anybody can give the answer for this? What do you understand by this quote? For example, you are the collector. You are given 50 members as your team. All the 50 members are very good. They suppose if you ask them to sit, they sit, they stand, they stand. If you ask them to go and jump into the fire, they can jump into the fire. So that is the way how the people behave. Are, they're very good people. But they don't do anything. They just simply sit and whatever you say, they do. Then what is the use? So they don't know what to do, but whatever you say that, uh, so you sit, you sit. They are very good. They don't do any harm to the organization. Then what is the use? That's why integrity without knowledge is weak and useless. But there are some people, you take a doctor, that fellow, you go to the doctor stating that, sir, I got some uh, stomach ache like that. So that fellow says, you got appendicitis, so, so we must go for operation. So then if that fellow goes with the appendicitis, then fellow also removes one kidneys very silently. Now tell me who is more dangerous? So the person who is not doing anything or is not contribute anything is useless, fine. But a man who is removing your kidney is more dangerous. Don't you think? It's more dangerous. Today, we got very good people. We got very good people. But these good people, they are not totally professional in their approach because they're not competent. But we got lots of competent people, but those people have no character. Do you understand this? To make this point very clear, I'm going to bring one more question by the UPSC. This is by 2018-3B. This is the quote given by Warren Buffett. It says this, in looking for people to hire, you look for three qualities. One is called integrity, intelligence, and energy. And if they do not have the first, the other two will kill you. What do we mean by this? While hiring, because when you are a CEO of a company, normally you go for hiring people. So when you want to hire people, you go for three qualities. One is that the person should have integrity. Mother of all virtues is called integrity. And you go by what the next is called? Intelligence. The third is called energy. What he says is this, very, very important. If they do not have the first called in integrity, the other two will kill you. What are the other two? Energy and intelligence. Remember, these two qualities called competence and character, both are equally important. But between the two, if you have to choose one, in this uh, character is more important. This is what uh, Warren Buffett says in this particular quote. This is the way how you find the questions in the UPSC paper. So what UPSC demands from you is that you must equip yourself with knowledge, 
and at the same time you must also equip yourself with the character. Then what to do to equip the character? We cannot purchase character in the market and uh, wear it like a coat. It is to be nurtured from within. And these classes, at these classes will definitely help you to nurture what is required for you as a good human being. Never think that uh, the knowledge which you acquire will be okay for civil services, but this knowledge should continue with you so that you are going to nurture your character forever. The competence will get you to the job, but the character will make you to continue in your journey. That's the reason in the ethics paper, what is more important is equipment yourself with the theoretical aspects and at the same time you are going to equip yourself with the character orientation. That's what uh, we have to think about it. Now coming to the other part for the ethics paper called case studies. Case studies, 120 marks. 130 is the theory, 120 for the case studies. But uh, which will give you more marks? Case studies not the theoretical part. Why? If you can tackle the case studies nicely, you can get 70 marks, 70 to 75 out of 120. Theory, even if you write very nicely, you may get around 65, maybe 60 or 65. Okay? So from that part, what's more important is you have to understand the case study. What exactly the case study? Case study can be defined like this. A case study is a scenario which presents a realistic and complex situation involving a problem, a conflict, or a dilemma to be solved or resolved. So it is a situation, it is a problem, it is a challenge which is presented to you. And that problem you have to catch and you have to give a solution for the problem. You see any movie, any movie will be a big hit if it has got the very complex situation and complex problem. For example, if you can see the Bahubali number two, what exactly the issue there? The issue in Bahubali is an ethical dilemma. What is that ethical dilemma? This man has given a word to the girl, lady, stating that uh, as long as I'm alive, I will see that your self-respect is being protected. And this girl was brought to the kingdom. There his mother said that you give this girl to your brother. He said, how can I? Because I gave a word to her that her honor will not be respected. But mother says, if she is not going to marry that uh, your brother, then she will be put behind the bars. So he was, he relinquished his kingdom rather than violating the word. So this is a bigger issue in the life of any person. It's an ethical dilemma. Ethical dilemma. That's why the picture is big hit because of such a decision taken by the hero in that that is what is known as the case study. When Bahubali is given a choice by his mother, whether you can take the kingdom or you, go, you want to go for the girl, then the person has gone for a girl, not the kingdom. So this is a bigger issue. Not easy. You can go get many girls, but not a big kingdom, isn't it? But here this man left the kingdom. Is it a, just a story? It's a reality. In 1936, Edward VIII, that fellow loved a girl. But what the people told, if you want the girl, you must leave the entire empire, British empire. So he left the British empire for the sake of a common girl. So very rare, a very rare incident. So what we can say in the case study, you are going to solve such issues. And your maturity is very, very important to solve such issues. How are you going to arrive at the solution that's more important? Okay? 
So from this perspective, the questions in the theory and the case studies given in the, uh, the second part, section B, they will be very interesting. To solve these things, some theoretical aspects are not enough. You must have highly matured way of giving a solution with a balanced approach. This is what is known as ethical decision making. This is what you are going to learn in the ethics paper. So ethics paper is not mere knowledge uh, dissemination or exchange of information like any other paper. For example, if you want to go for geography, there you are going to give either the physical geography or the human geography or economic geography, but ethics is not like that. Ethics is you are going to trigger the insights into your uh, personality. So it is not a concrete aspect, it's totally an experiential subject. So friends, what exactly the impact of ethics paper? So I would like to share a very briefly about the impact of the ethics paper. On selection of the rank of the service, you are going to be uh, impacted. Example here you can see, these are the marks from SI and this is about the general study, this is called the ethics paper. Ida Single, the first ranker got 135 marks, whereas Mr. Sai Singer Landa got 62 marks in ethics paper. Now you see the difference between 135 to 62. You can see here the marks, okay. So the difference between these two, had he got almost 132 marks, that fellow might have got a rank of almost uh, 231 so. Okay, so uh, in the case of this, this boy called uh, Gargi Jain, he got uh, 45th rank, but had he got the marks of uh, this lady, he might have got third rank. Some people lost in the civil services because those people are unable to score good marks in the ethics paper. Even if you get to score good marks in the ethics paper, but you are not getting the good rank. In order to get the good rank and get selection, what is important is you have to score highly in ethics paper. As I told you, because uh, that's called the, the lady, this is called the, uh, Vishaka Yadav, she got 162. In the ethics paper, as a result, she got into IAS. Otherwise, she might have lost it. Okay, I will go to show you how it is going to impact you again on essay writing. Both are interlinked. Essay writing ethics are both are interlinked. And I would like to show you uh, how the essays are given in the UPSC. In 2018, if you can see the type of essays asked by the UPSC, a good life is one inspired by love and guided by knowledge. To write this essay, what is important, you must, you cannot get from any book ready-made uh, essays. You have to again uh, church yourself to how to give the right answer. Poverty anywhere, the threat to prosperity everywhere. Customary morality cannot guide, cannot be guide to modern life. The past is a permanent dimension of a human consciousness and values. There, unless you understand what exactly are the values, the human consciousness, etc., you cannot write a good answer. Like that in 2019, uh, you, can, you, can, you can see the uh, essays. For example, courage to accept and dedication to improve are two keys to success. Best for an individual is not necessarily best for the society. Values are not what humanity is, but what humanity ought to be. To write such uh, essays, what is important is, again, ethics background. It's very important. For example, 2020, recently, life is a long journey. Life is a long journey between being a human and being a humane. Okay? So what is human and what is humane, unless you understand these two, from the ethics point of view, you cannot write a good uh, 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 answer. Mindful manifestation is a catalyst to tranquil itself. 
then ships do not sink because of water around them. Ships sink because of water that gets into them. So it is a metaphor about our life. Our life is like a ship. Okay, so if you are not aware of how the life is to be handled, then you are going to sink yourself. Then simplicity is ultimately sophistication. So to write such essays, what is important is again understanding ethics. Okay. Friends, I will show you how important it is in other papers also. In paper number one, social issues are there. In paper number two, social justice, governance and other issues. And whatever you are going to learn in the ethics class, that is going to give a narrative for other papers also. That will give a good uh, beginning or maybe good uh, interpretation of the question itself. Uh, impact on personality test that they told you about your emotional competence, about your balance of judgment, your comprehension, and your decision making, again, depend on your ethical balance. So if you are very strong as far as the ethics subject is concerned, that's called your, your character is concerned, then you can handle the personality test very easily and you can score very good marks. Okay, what is special with here? Or uh, what I can say, what is special with my classes as per the ethics and essays are concerned? So I would like to give a few very, very special issues which are not available outside. So number one I can say, there are th three types of knowledge. What are the three types of knowledge? One type of knowledge is known as adaptive layer of knowledge. I got a big library, so I ordered for billies from IKEA. Billies come not in the shape of bookshelves. They come in the form of a package. They will send a manual, according to the manual, I have to arrange the billies to suit myself to the library. Okay. So what is important, I have to see the manual and I must arrange these things, then I can get a shape of a thing. That is what is known as adapt to knowledge, adapt to layer of knowledge. Most of you may purchase books and you can read them and you can acquire some information that is called adapt to layer of knowledge only. But adapt to layer of knowledge is not enough for the ethics paper. What's more important, you have to go for experienced layer. What is experienced layer? Experienced layer means you have to experience going into the same state of mind. For example, there, is a, there was a writer, Somerset Mom. You might have heard the name. Somerset Mom was a great novelist. He wanted to write about a porter in the railways. Then what he did, he didn't write sitting in the AC room about the, port, the life of the porter. So this man worked as a porter virtually in a railway station for six months. He worked as a porter in the railway station for six months and he wrote a card as per his experiences. And that novel became very famous because he knew with his own experience, with his own eyes, he saw each and every aspect and he portrayed that is very important. To teach the subject called ethics, you must have the practical experience. You means here the faculty should communicate the experience from his own life. That's why this is a subject in the, what I can call in the bureaucracy. Unless the person is a bureaucrat, he cannot know what is taking place in the bureaucracy. A bureaucrat can give the insights, or insights into the entire the setup. That's why as far as other subjects are concerned, I cannot have no disputes, but as far as the ethics and the essays are concerned, we must all, uh, the, the faculty should also have the knowledge in the bureaucracy. Then only he can give the right perspective. And he must also have the right knowledge in the personality development. What is the personality development? You got the world class trainers today. 
Dale Carnegie down to almost uh, Stephen Orkavy, there are great, great personal development trainers. If you happen to read his books, their books, and the view the, I mean, uh, went, uh, go to the workshops, you will experience what is to be bring about from yourself, how to expand yourself. That is very, very important. Okay, so the second part is more important for ethics paper. In order to write the ethics paper, what is important, you must have the experiential faculty to give the inputs to you. The third is called the existential layer. Existential layer means we have to visualize what is more important. It is not merely experience itself is not enough. We have to foresee, we have to visualize what is going to happen after five years, 10 years. What is required really? If you take S.R. Sankaran as an AS officer, he has created certain institutions which are now useful. The social welfare hostels are maybe the schools and the uh, study circles and the single window systems, they were all created by that person. Nobody thought about that. But today they are so useful. He visualized what is required uh, for the administration. That is what is known as existential layer of knowledge. Friends, remember, if you want to get more marks, you must have the three types of knowledge. How can you acquire this? You may get the first layer from the books available outside, but these two you are going to gain by the faculty because who is more experienced in administration, who is more exposed for the personality development training, the, uh, the world affairs, and the person who is now go deep into the society, who is understanding the society, such people can give the right and inputs for civil services. I would like to tell you uh, what is special here is the template approach for writing the case study. Uh, what I observed with uh, my experience in uh, the case studies, you read any book, you don't find any type of uh, <clears throat> a template for writing the case study. Each case study is different. If you see the case studies which are available in the market, books are available, but all these case studies are distinct by each one is different. So you, you are going to write in, in, in the way you like it, but that is not the right approach. A case study should be written just like a short story. Very, very interesting. Then how to write it? And how to apply? Can we apply a template? Template means a structured approach for this. I have observed from the 51 case studies given by the UPSC from the last eight years, plus one, uh, the model paper, 51 case studies are there. If you can see the 51 case studies, there is a pattern which is very, very important. If you understand that, you can write the case studies beautifully and get very good marks. My students are getting very good marks by following the methodology which I have been for giving. And these are a few candidates. Now, Rishi Priya is an IRTS 135, Smilna Sudhakar IPS 134, Parth Gupta now IRS in 129, and Mr. Ashish Das, IAS 124. These are the marks of my students in uh, ethics paper. Friends, finally, what I can say about, as far as ethics is concerned, life before joining the ethics paper, life after joining the ethics paper. This, this is the feedback which I generally receive from the candidates after completion of the course. So because you get character development through ethics and essays. Because for me, ethics and essay paper is not mere giving information. It is sharing experiences. The sharing experiences from the, my life as a bureaucrat from the, in the central government or the state government, and at the same time, I devoted a large amount of time for exploring myself, understanding myself, by learning from the masters of the world. I attended world-class training courses from the great masters and learned from them. And these are very, very useful and they are very much essential for ethics paper and essay paper. This is what I'm going to share in the ethics paper, okay? So, 
What I would like to finally say is about, as far as this is concerned, then you will be transformed. You will be transformed. The transformation takes place right from the class number one. So that is the experience what I have observed with my students. And uh, once you become a bureaucrat, then you are going to put your head very high because you are going to have a strong foundation with the value system. And you are not going to bend your head before anybody. So that's you are going to gain by attending the ethics classes. OK? So we can move on to the, so that's what we have discussed about the ethics. Now I will go to the essay paper. So essay how and how, what you are going to gain out of this. Friends, what I'm going to share as for the essay is concerned, so I will also give you a roadmap for this. The impact of essay, again on your uh, rank and selection. Okay, it's also a game changer. We are going to share this. How the UPSC essay is different from academic essay. You're all writing academic essays. Academic essays are full of what? Full of information. In that essay, we don't find you. What we find is only information. But UPSC essay is not for information. UPSC essay is for you. We are going to see you through the UPSC essay. That's what is requir required for UPSC essay. Okay? What is the nature of the UPSC essay? There is a big difference as far as the nature of the UPSC is concerned. Then e can we apply a template for writing the UPSC essays? Template will definitely enable you to write the essay very easily, quickly, and with a systematic approach. So I will give a template for you to apply for essay writing. Then anatomy of an excellent essay. Suppose if you want to see the essay written by the toppers, whether they have followed this template approach. If they follow the template approach, their essays will be excellent. Or if not, essay will be very loose and you cannot appreciate the structure of the essay. Then enriching the UPS essay. How to enrich? Enrich the essay means what? You are going to make it more nutritious. You can find people, youngsters, who are not going for the gym, who are simply just, uh, I mean, go. What we find is they are very lean, maybe some bulky, and they don't uh, take care of that. But if you go to gym and you can go for uh, uh, exercises, you can find V-shaped bodies, and if, if the body will be very, uh, very uh, pleasant to look at, like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's body. So what's important is you must have enrichment in the essay so that you can make your essay more balanced. And the secret of sizzling the superb essay. What is the superb essay and how to sizzle it? You are going to make the essay a beautiful piece to be appreciated and to be made impressed. And the dynamics of delightful presentation. Whatever you are going to present should be delightful in the sense they should give pleasure when you read that essay. These are the things which you must always keep in mind while writing the essay. So I will give very briefly about these components. Again, this is a, a game changer. Aporva Pandey, she got 175 marks in essay writing. You can see here 175 marks she got. She got 39th rank. But you see, in other subjects, in paper number one, she got 110, 118, of course, what three, she got very good marks, 145. But in ethics paper, she got very low, 92. And in uh, personality test also, she got uh, very low, 165. She wrote an essay that's called The New Age Women. So she, she got very good marks. 175 is mind boggling, but it's a very good mark. So game changer. You see here, had she got maybe 135 or so, 40 marks less than she might have lost her IAs. She might have got group A service, but she got into IAs basically because of what? This mark, 175 in essay. 
You must also remember, I would like to bring here Mr. Uh, N uh, Nikhil B. So Nikhil B, in his first attempt, he got, in 2015, he got 45 marks. But in 2016, he got 158. The difference is 113 marks. That made all the difference. He got one hour sound rank. He is now in uh, Karnataka, the AS officer. So essay made a big difference in his uh, success. So essay is a game changer. I would like to show you here the impact of the essay. This is by Ira Singhal. She got 160 marks, whereas Mr. Sanjay Singh got only 29. 29 out of 250. Percentage is only 11% of marks. You must get at least 10% of the marks so as to be qualified to be in the race. But he got only 29, barely scraped through, and he got only 29 out of 250, whereas she got 160, 64%. It makes a big difference. Friends, remember, essay makes a big difference in uh, civil services. But how to gain more marks, that is our concern. Okay, so we can see the strategy of the toppers. Uh, the strategy of the toppers we can see here, I'm going to focus here about uh, Mr. Neetish. Neetish, she got 142 in SI. In paper number one, two, three, he got the 212. That is 28% marks. With the 28% marks, you cannot imagine anybody coming to the mains. But he got huge marks in his uh, optional subject. Of course, ethics, he got 100. But in uh, paper 1, 2, he got 173, 173 equally. That's called 346. And in the personality test, he got uh, 206. So that made that person to get 1,006. And he got eighth rank at that time. So if you can see the strategies of the, uh, the toppers, these toppers give importance to essay, ethics paper, option subject, and a personality test. Paper one, two, three in the general studies, however you work very hard, tough to get good marks. If you can score 110 on average in the three papers, and in the ethics if you can score around 130 or so, and in the essay paper you can get 140, 150, and in the personality test, you can score 175 like that with uh, maybe some 280 to 300 in the option paper. Nobody can stop you to enter into the civil service. So here, essay paper is very, very vital. That's what I would like to say, share here. This is by Mithali Sethi, a beautiful uh, rank she got, 51. And she got 160. 160 in SI, but in paper number 1, 2, 3, you can see 110, 84, 109, uh, 108, 109. Very, very average marks as far as these papers are concerned. But she got in psychology 135, 167, and the personality test 179. She got into IAS with the 51st rank. Here again, her strong point was again SI. If you are very strong in essay, then that is going to uh, support you all the way to get into the civil services. Okay? How are the UPSC essays different from other essays? That's called academic essays. You may think that I can write an essay. Yes, you can write an essay because we have been writing essays. But UPSC essay is entirely different from what you write in the academic field. In the academic field, what you write, you are going to collect some information and you present the information. That is not required. Why this essay is introduced and why 250 marks are given to you? It is to test your personality, friends, not to know the subject. Subject we can know from paper number one, two, three, and your option subject, but they want to know about your character through essay. How can I say uh, they are going to test through essay? I'm going to share with you. Mithali Sethi says this, who got to 160 marks. She says, writing an essay is showing who you are on paper. 
you are putting yourself across the paper. While re evaluating your uh, essay paper, I'm going to see who you are. How? How, I'm, how, uh, how is that I'm going to gauze you or measure you by the essay? Because any essay, what you are going to write, whether it is an issue-based essay or opinion-based essay, you are going to give your peace of mind. For example, when a solution you are going to suggest, the solution, the way out, the way forward, are the solutions what you are going to present. I'm going to see your creativity, your originality, and your thought process, your balance of mind. All these things are measured in the, even in the fact-oriented essays. But in the opinion-based essays, totally you are presenting yourself because you are not going to present any information. You are going to present your experiences and your observations. Thereby, I'm going to gauge who you are. What is your depth of understanding? What is your balance of mind? What is your attitude? Whether you are a person taking care of the poor people on the street or you are just a person thinking about the ivory tower solutions. This is all about essay. The nature of the essay is very, very important. Okay? Now what she says further, let us see. The UPC examiner doesn't know you as a person your paper is what he or she has to know who you are. If you are a, a compassionate, honest, truthful, proven on paper, as of now, that is the only way, that is the only way to know who you are. And this is being tested through SI. Believe me, if you are all of that, it will definitely come on paper too, which is why I emphasize so much on thinking right thinking right. So this is what uh, Mithali Sethi says about the essay writing. Okay? So UPSC looks out for certain traits from the civil aspirants and want to assess them through their essays. In this sense, the UPSC essay is the reflection of the personality of each candidate, unlike the academic essay or any other essay. Am I clear? It is not just what you are going to read some points and write in the essay. That will not uh, give the solution for that. It is uh, what you are going to share by your life experiences, your creativity, and your originality. This is what I am going to test through the essay. Then those people are going to get uh, high marks, not other people. A person who is being selected as a civil servant, getting 29 marks in essay means what? Any person who cleared the prelim examination should be very intelligent. Otherwise, they cannot clear prelim. It's very, very tough. But why that boy got only 29? He just presented uh, the information, not presented his personality. Whereas, in a single, she got 160, or Apuro Pandey got 175, they have presented their personalities. That's why they got higher marks. Okay? So remember, civil service is a different altogether a ball, a, a, a game, where you have to present yourself because you are going to handle the most important uh, institutions in the country. Recommendation of the Satish Chandra Committee. So you may ask me, sir, uh, you are saying that uh, whether it is right or wrong. While recommending essay, in, 2000, in uh, 1990, so 1990, Satish Chandra Committee was appointed to give recommendation whether the essay is to be reintroduced or not. You may be knowing that up to 79, essay was there. In 79, essay was removed from the civil services. Again, this was reintroduced in 93, 1993. So there he has given the recommendation. He said this. They are, they means here the candidates are expected to prepare policy papers, notes, drafts, memoranda, or reports, etc., 
on a variety of subjects, essay paper was introduced with the objective of testing candidates linguistic skills besides capacity for comprehension, ability for critical analysis, capacity for integrated thinking, assimilation of ideas and the clarity of expression. These are all the things which you get by getting higher maturity. They are the traits they want to test, not your information. How much information you have gathered is not what the UPSC wants to know. A robot can do this better, a computer can do this better. But what they want to see is your skills, your ability, your comprehension, balance of mind, your compre uh, and your uh, analytical ability, our integrated approach, assimilation of ideas, and clarity of expression. These are the traits. These are the characteristics they want to see through essay. If you want to get more marks, you have to practice them. So what is the nature of the UPSC essay? There are two types of essays, was it, uh, what I told you, issue-based essays and opinion-based essays. Issue-based essays means what an issue. For example, uh, monetization, today we got it, National Monetization Pipeline Project. So that is an issue. It is right or wrong for India. It again, you are going to give your pros and cons. As a person with a lot of depth of the Indian economy and the Indian society, I'm against the policy of the monetization of Indian assets. It is selling the family's silver for the sake of the convenience. Who has given you the power to mortgage these things for 30 years and getting six lakh crores now and spending for some other purpose? And the burden is to be faced by the coming generations and we don't know what happens to the properties which we are giving for monetization. But you are not going to be blunt like this. You are going to give pros and cons. That gives your balance of mind. You understand? So you must uh, give your balance of mind by giving the pros and cons about this issue. And finally, you have to give the way out. How to go about it? Yes, we need money. Should we go for monetization of the assets? We are privatizing the the assets, we are now going for outright selling the assets. And you are going to get money. You are also getting a lot of money through the excess component on the petrol, Vogera. Then should we go for this? So you have to give in a very systematic manner as to, you should not give an impression that you are against the policy of the government. At the same time, you are, uh, you are also a person concerned with the welfare of the country. So this is the way how you are going to show your personality through a issue-based essay. As far as this opinion-based essay is concerned, there you have to give again your experiences and your understanding. So friends, remember these essays are going to test your personality. Okay? Let us see whether we can have a, uh, so these are called issue-based essays given over a period of time. You can see the patriarchy is the least noted but most significant structure of social inequality. So today we got an issue where we are looking at women as inferior to men. The patriarchic attitude is responsible for that. We have nurtured it for thousands of years. We are not looking at women as equal to men. This is because of what? The social inequality because of the patriarchy. So you have to write the answer. And there you have to show your empathy towards women. There I'm going to see whether you are empathetic towards women or not. Or whether you are a patriarchal person always supporting the male members. So the balance of approach is very, very important where we are going to write the issue-based essays. Coming to, this is what is known as the opinion-based essays. And uh, you know here, best for an individual is not necessarily best for the society. It may be best for you, but not best for the society. But sometimes, best for the individual is also best for the society. That balance has to be brought here. Best for Gandhi is best for the country. Best for Buddha was best for India. So sometimes, the great personalities, when they think it is the best, that will be useful for the society. But an ordinary person, when he thinks it is best for uh, himself, uh, is not best for the society. So you have to bring the 
uh, the balance between these two and write the essay. Life is a long journey between uh, being a human to being a humane. Human, we are all human beings, but we are not all human beings. What is the difference between those two? Unless you are aware of your human values and practice them in your life, you cannot become a humane. Gautam Buddha is a human, whereas Hitler is not human. Human is a human being. Hitler is a human being, but not a human being. What's the difference between those two? Human values are very, very important. So what are they? And how a human being can be converted into a human being? That's what you are going to write in the essay. Got it? Is there a template for the essay? Very difficult to give a template for, so, template approach is very much important. Very difficult to come with a template approach, but the template can be found for issue based and we can also have a template for the, a flexible template for the opinion based essays. So that's what I'm going to provide in the essay writing. Anatomy of an excellent essay. We are going to see the topics. I am going to present, represent, uh, present to you a lot of topics, their videos as to how these people have followed the techniques to score more marks. I am going to give a lot of inputs on this thing. An approach for enriching the essay. So I am going to introduce to you four important approaches to enrich the essay. A lean essay can be made very strong and robust by introducing this type of approaches so that you can Present an essay with uh, 1,100 words. What is important? You have to write only 1,200 words, not more than that. But your essay can be from 1,000 words to 12, uh, 1,200 words. In between, you can write the essay. Okay. So don't write more. You cannot write less. You should not write less than 1,000 also. Then how to write? If you know the methods of enriching the essay, then you can make it. Make it into 1,000 and 1,100 words. The secret of sizzling a super essay. What is a super essay? Super essay is an essay which fetch you more than 176 and plus marks. Because 175 already got. Aparo Pandey created the history. Then what is the fun in uh, going for 175? We must aim for more than 175. Can we score? Yes, we can provided you understand how to sizzle out a great essay. That's more important. I will tell you how to do it. Uh, this, is by, uh, this is by a comparison between two persons. Here you can see Neha Kumari is our student. She got 158 marks. And uh, Tusha Ramcha Sharma, he got uh, 99 marks in essay writing. And what this boy said, this is very important. The boy said that uh, my marks in essay would indicate that it couldn't, uh, didn't go too well. To be honest, I couldn't practice at all. That fellow did practice any essay, directly went to the examination, wrote the, uh, the essays, and he got 99 marks. And he, what he said, just relied on my knowledge, wrote it for the first time in the mains only, and the moment I finished it, I knew this would pull me back. What is important for an essay? Practice. You have to make a lot of practice to write the essays. I will make you to write more essays. I will tell you how to go for more essays. Before you go for the mains examination, you must write at least 50 essays, five zero essays. If you can have this type of practice in advance, what would be the advantage? The advantage is you are going to present the introduction and the conclusions and the structure of the essay very easily within a short span of time. And who knows, the essays we, you, have, you have prepared, they may come in the examination also. Uh, in fact, I have been conducting the test series. I last time gave 14 essays for uh, the boys and girls for writing the, uh, for the UPSC 2020. Out of 14 essays I gave for the, uh, the practice, Three essays came as they are. Three essays came, you have to write only two. That means what? If you write the essays in advance, and if the essays come in the examination again, 
it will be in cloud nine you are going to get the huge marks. So friends, that is the practice of writing, uh, the advantage of writing the essay. So pre-exam preparation, I'm going to tell you how to write. And while exam preparation, while you are in the examination also, what tips and uh, techniques you have to follow, we are going to share in the classroom, okay? So, uh, I will come to this dynamic of delightful presentation. That means people are writing the essays, but we find they are repulsive. We don't find any juice in uh, tasting these essays. Why? Because these people are not aware of how to present the essay. What's more important is you have to understand why you are writing the essay, the purpose you have to understand, who is the audience? The audience is not a common person. He is almost three times your age. You are writing to a person who is almost 70 years old guy who is going to evaluate your papers. And you have to please that person to give, he, to give you more marks. So you must understand his psychology. For that, what is important? Modes of writing you must practice and the style of writing is, you must practice. What exact is modes of uh, writing? So I'm going to give you here if you want to get the attention of the person, you have to understand how to pr present your ethos, how to present your pathos, how to present your logos, how to present your kairos. So these are all Greek words. We are going to share the meanings and the how they are to be practiced while writing the essays. I'm going to tell you in the essays. Style of writing, that's very, very important, isn't it? So style of writing, what goes into the style of writing? The style of writing when you want to, you, you can see the usage. Usage means the vocabulary. What type of words you use? Vocabulary is very, very important. You need not go for the high sounding, jaw breaking, uh, dollar weight words you need not use. You can use simple words, but elegant words you have to use. The second is called brevity. You must use simple sentences and at the same time, you must also have elegant construction of the sentences. I don't know whether you are aware of the construction of the sentence or not. We are going to talk about this elements of writing the sentence and how to construct a paragraph, the introductory paragraph, the concluding paragraph. They are not easy. They, got, they are depending on principles. They are dependent on principles. Because once you learn these principles in the classroom, when an essay is given to you, because I'm going to give the printed material to you and ask you to see whether the principles are being followed by the authorities or not. I'm going to give you the top most writers who wrote the essays and selling in the market. I will give the, so the, those essays to you. I will ask you whether these essays were written as per the principles. They were not written as per the principles. It's not arrogance. I'm talk, here I'm talking about the sense. Because most of the people are not aware of how to write a sentence and how to write a paragraph and how to construct a essay. This is what we are going to share with the principles. Because principles apply wherever you apply. So I'm going to share the principles of the usage, brevity, clarity, how to bring clarity, how to bring vigor into your sentences. These are all part of the, what I can call as the essay, okay? So these are a few students who got the marks. So my students got 148, 134. So this is the range of marks. So most of my students, they get more than 125 plus in essay, and they get uh, more. So these are all the students. Uh, in uh, uh, Recently, they appeared for the civil service, and they got these marks. And I can say that you can easily get 140 and 160. That's the range. You can get it. And my view is that I want to see that you are going to break the marks got by Aparo Pandey. That can be achievable, provided you are going to apply the principles which we are going to talk about in the classroom, okay? Uh, this is what we have discussed under the essay. And uh, what do we learn from ethics and essay? So both put together, uh, I would like to sum up what we can learn from these two subjects. So what does the UPSC demand from us? UPSC demand from us the decision-making skills. Uh, in other words, the demand that you are going to develop yourself into a person of competence and person of character. 
This is what we are going to aim in the classes. The second thing is how the syllabus is prescribed. The syllabus for the essay and ethics are prescribed basing on your character and your competence, more of character, so that what we have to learn. What are the types of questions in the case studies? In the case studies, what the type of questions are, it is about the problem solving approach with ethical stance. That's very, very important that we are going to see. The impact of ethics and the essay and selection, your rank and your selection depend on the marks you gain in essay and ethics. No doubt your option subject is very important, but apart from the option subject, the ethics and the essay both are very important. If you learn these things, they will definitely help you for your personality test. Then strategy of the toppers we are going to share and focus on to score how more marks. My aim is to score more marks. I wrote a book called The Markle of Yuham. That's there in Telugu and then of course coming in English also. That will, uh, that's, there are going to be translated in other languages. So Markle of Yuham, that's about uh, the study skills. I'm going to share the study skills as to how to maximize your marks. Then what do you learn on ethics and essay? As I told you, your life before joining for the ethics paper and essay paper, and your life after completion of the course in the ethics and essay paper. That will be a marked difference you are going to see in your perceptions and your personality. This much I can say because of my confidence. Okay, now we are going to have the last session called the questions and answers floor is open. You may ask me any questions. My pleasure to answer you. On ethics and essay, you may ask the questions. Yes. So in general parlance, we always uh, say like ethics, morals, values, but while framing this uh, syllabus of UPSC, why the heading of that subject is given as ethics, integrity and attributes? Hmm. Nowhere they mentioned about uh, certain words. In the syllabus, they ask you about ethics, but morality is not being mentioned there. Okay. They give the word called integrity, but no word called trust is not given there. But the three words what they have mentioned is called ethics, integrity, and aptitude. Here, ethics is a term which is applicable your behavior with other people. Ethics is how you interact with other people. And what others expect is good. Your behavior should be suitable. You understand? Suppose if you don't behave as is being expected by others, then how are you going to be treated? Society expects certain standards to be followed, and if you don't follow the standards, then you will be outcast. Will be taken away from or weaned away from the society. That's why ethics is very important in, uh, in administration. Because you are going to deal with whom? With the common people. Always remember an administrator deals with the common people. So there it is expected that you are going to be good with other people. Okay? Number two, integrity. What exactly is integrity? Integrity is doing the good thing even if nobody is watching you. You are not going to be duplicate. You want to be you with your character. That is called integrity. Okay, aptitude. Aptitude is leaning towards. What is attitude, aptitude? Aptitude is not just like uh, the aptitude test. Aptitude here is your leaning towards the society. Your aim is to serve other people. So from this perspective, from this perspective, the three words were brought as, coined as this subject called ethics, integrity, and aptitude. 
But in fact, these words might have been changed. In fact, there is a very important word called a trust. That word is not being used here. Okay, so if you want to say one word, you might have put it as ethics paper. But they have brought it uh, integrity, they also brought the aptitude. Why they brought it? Because they want to widen it. They widen it, the scope, because ethics is regarding the social standards, integrity about your personal standards, and aptitude is about how we are going to interact with other people. So from that perspective, they want to broaden it. That's why these the terms three were used here. Why this subject is introduced? It was introduced from 2013. Why it was introduced? Not only corruption. Not only corruption. What they observed is that there is no accountability. There is no transparency. So what's more important is accountability is required, transparency is required. You need to be responsive. What is responsive? Because you are a servant of the people, isn't it? Government servant means people's servant. You must act as a servant, not the master. So these things are very much important. They come to you once you realize that you are really a person with a broader understanding and at the same time maintain humility. You always remember a person of high caliber only can be humble. A person of the little learning is always showing that he is so knowledgeable. You see, any great person with a great knowledge, they will be very simple, very humble. Like Gandhi, simplicity is very, very important. So, an administrator should always be very simple. And at the same time, he must be responsive, he must be empathetic, he must be compassionate towards the people. He should not give orders like break the heads of the farmers. You understand that? So the question here is, you must be humble enough to serve the people. And for, from that perspective, ethics paper is being prescribed in civil service. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. So what changes can see in a bureaucrats was directed before 2013 and after 2013? Because paper was not changed in 2013. The behavioral changes are supposed to be there among the bureaucrats. But the point here is, you are not going to inject these things by force. I mean, did it play any major role? In Definitely. Earlier they were not aware. Today you are aware. What, not, what, how to behave and how not to behave. But still we see in the not all administrators. They are all stray incidents. If you can see the Haryana incident or Tripura incident or maybe Chhattisgarh incident, these are all stray cases. But the most of the administrators, you can see the bright side of the youngsters. They are doing wonderful work. Wonderful work. They are almost fighting like uh, bulls against the bad administration. But uh, unfortunately, the bad comes to our notice, but the good is not being projected. I have been observing the youngsters what they are doing in Karnataka, in uh, Kerala, in uh, Haryana, in other places. Because today I feel very happy because a large number of our youngsters, they are doing wonderful work as administrators. So we cannot go by a few incidents which are coming to our notice. The media, social media projects what? The bad side of the bureaucrats, but what about the good side? So that will not come because bureaucrats are supposed to be behind the desks. They are not going, they, they should not come to the forefront because the politician takes the entire center stage. The bureaucrat is the driving force behind a politician. So that should be the way how the bureaucrat should work. But some people just like, uh, so they are losing their tempers. So we are now teaching about emotional intelligence, but they are not following emotional int intelligence. Can, it be, can we inject it? No. It is to be nurtured over a period of time. So from that perspective, definitely there's a marked difference between the people who were there prior to 
2013 and after that. Youngsters are doing wonderful work, but that does not mean that uh, earlier people are not good. Earlier people are very good because they have got their own culture, they are called work culture, but now we have been taking very conscious effort to see that uh, today's challenges are much bigger than the challenges of yesterday. Yesterday, society is small, people are law abiding and uh, of course there are no exposure for these uh, issues, but today more transparent, more challenges and at the same time there are more issues today we have to face. So from that perspective, yes definitely we cannot say all angels are coming for the civil services, but very good people are coming for the civil services. That much I can tell with my experience and I have been observing the wonderful work carried out by the Angus Thank you. Any questions this side? You must get some questions maybe, uh, some doubts maybe you need, some clarifications. If you are good at ethics and essay, fine. But I think definitely a person who got more knowledge definitely got some uh, doubts. Yes? So is, is classroom learning sufficient uh, to inject this ethical value of civil services as well? Classroom learning is like uh, teaching on how to swim. But you have to swim in the water. What does it mean? You are going to learn the inputs. You are going to learn the experiences of other people. But you are going to put them for thinking. Thinking means you are going to interact with the people and you are going to see the results. So that is one Dale Carnegie, you might have heard his name. Dale Carnegie wrote the book called How to Win Friends and Influence People. That the title of the book is How to Win Friends and Influence People. What he wrote is not mere book. He wrote this book for 15 years, one five years. How? This man used to give uh, one principle, ask the class pe people to apply this principle for one week because he used to take on Sundays only classes. And throughout that six days or seven days, these people have to practice this principle, come back to the class and share how they have put this principle into practice. That way, he wrote that book containing almost 60 principles in that book but they are all practical. Next to Bible, the book was sold in such a large number of books. It's a very practical, very, very interesting book and that is the way how we must also learn anything. So you have to practice. For example, you are learning emotional intelligence in a class, but what good is we're learning without practicing those things? You are getting anger and you are showing anger outside, but you are not realizing that you are getting anger. Then what is the problem? So people definitely get anger. But at the same time, if you are uh, emotionally intelligent, you are going to realize that yes, you are getting anger. Then you can withdraw yourself from the situation or you can uh, repair the damage caused by your anger. But a person who is aware of what uh, emotions, what type of uh, damage the emotions are to, going to cause, then you are going to take care of how to practice emotional intelligence. Okay. So emotional intelligence means you have to regulate yourself. The most important component of emotional intelligence is regulation of yourself. What is regulation? Regulation means when you are getting some type of anger you have to control. Suppose your body is giving a call that I must go out when uh, in the middle of a class like this. Then you are you're going to regulate yourself. That comes by emotional intelligence. You understand? So emotional intelligence is very much important as an ingredient for civil services. So that you have to practice every day. Understand? So by merely sitting in the class and listening to the lectures given by the person will not be helpful. You have to absorb them. Okay. So it is a journey. It is a journey. So you start with the 5%, 10%, 15%. 
over a period of time, maybe five years or 10 years, you are going to get uh, total control on yourself. Total control means when you must be very tough, you must be tough. An emotionally intelligent person means not a person like uh, too good. A Muslim person knows how to be very strong, confident, and how to be considerate towards others. Like that, there are many inputs we are going to learn in the um, subjects like uh, ethics and essay. And these are to be practiced. I cannot say that you are going to uh, get just like injection. So I cannot put a van and transform you. I'm going to give the inputs, but you have to practice them and see that whether they're giving the result or not. Because as a student, when I was almost an intermediate student, I came across the Dale Carnegie book, the, and I studied them, I practiced them. I practiced them, I say that uh, I am getting the results. I transformed my life by practicing Dale Carnegie's principles. There are, there are many gurus for me. For that matter, I cannot say that uh, I learned by myself. So I learned from the advice of great trainers. Trainers. That's why it's still, I say that I'm still learning. So there is no end for learning. So we have to learn, we have to learn. Can you say Gandhi is perfect? No. Gandhi controlled to a large extent compared to other people. is very a, a, a giant. But Gandhi is not that much uh, great when compared to maybe Gautam Buddha. We cannot say Gautam Buddha is totally great. It's all comparison, isn't it? So perfection you cannot get. It's only a relative performance what you are going to aim. That comes by degree by degree. But the beginning should be there with awareness, some extent you are going to gain in these classes. I'm going to share with you 80 hours. And of course, some tests will be there uh, after. So I'm going to take in the two modules. First module we are going to conduct for 16 days. Then I give a three weeks time. So you are going to get, I mean, uh, read these chapters, get some hold on that thing. We are going to have a mid-test for that. After that, the second module will be there. After what test will be there. Then you are going to get the full-fledged test. Then they will be evaluated and we will see that where you stand. So there you can you start your journey. You start your journey. So that gives an indication how to, you, you, how to equip yourself. So ethics and essay papers are not merely for confined to only civil services. Remember, this is a life changing experiences, which we are going to share. Any questions, please, this side? Yeah. So how can we make a base strong for ethics and essay? Like we have to read some biographies, autobiographies of great people, uh, apart from our main books, what shall we use? You are going to have some role models from these great people. So they are the leaders, they are the reformers, they are the administrators. They are the thinkers and the philosophers. So that is given in the syllabus itself. We are going to see uh, roughly some 10 hours class. We are going to focus on these five categories of the people. And we are going to see their knowledge through the quotations. Quotations. In fact, uh, you are getting around five quotations every year. From the last three years, you can see question number six contains three A, B, C, all are quotes. In question maybe three or maybe four, you find a quote. So like that uh, average, you are getting five quotations every year. And these five quotations are from great people, like Gandhi, Aristotle, maybe Abdul Kalam, Napoleon Bonaparte. Uh, so you get from great personalities, Socrates like that. So you are going to get these quotes, then you have to write the quotation with uh, 150 words. How to write? There is a technique for writing this. I will tell you the writing skills. How many components we have to incorporate while writing a particular personality that we are going to see. And thereby, you are going to get in touch with more than maybe 100, 150 personalities minimum. And there, you are going to see who is more akin to you. You may like some people most. Then you can start reading their biographies or autobiographies. That will definitely bring a lot of change in you. 
okay. So, there are the real, uh, there are the role models, there are the role models you have to read them, imbibe their knowledge, thereby you can transform yourself. So, that we are going to introduce, so we are going to discuss these things. Especially what is more important your value system, how to arrive at your value system, how to examine what is your value system. If you see Gandhi, he is a man of values. If you see poor Mahatma Jyoti Bhapule, man of values. Savitri Bhapule, women of values. So how these people built their value systems? You are also going to have a discovery of yourself. I will make you to discover your values and I will share my value system to you. And I will also make you to arrive at your value system in the class, class itself. And that will become a manual for your life. You are going to carry this value system along with you. I am going to make exercises to discover yourself. That is called self-discovery. We are going to have an exercises for those things. To arrive at the value system, how the people with the value systems, they can identify the values, clarify their values and prioritize their values. That's what we are going to share in the class itself. So the biographies and autobiographies are very much important for understanding our deals, how to expand our potential that comes by understanding great people. So that is a part of the syllabus. As a part of the syllabus we are going to uh, study them in depth. Any questions, please? Yes. yes. So, what are the pre Gender studies are required for those two subjects. Gender studies are great for those two subjects. They come under the general studies structure. In fact, uh, you cannot treat like paper 1, 2, 3 of the general studies. But uh, they put it as essay, a separate essay. Ethics was brought under paper number 4. That is the nomenclature. But actually this is a different paper. You cannot uh, treat it as a general studies paper. This is entirely different. A particular knowledge, for example, in the paper number two, you got that administrative structure of the governance, where you are also going to study about law, etc., etc., but they are limited for only structures. But here you are going to see them from ethics angle. So there is a lot of it. public administration, constitution, Vagera, they are touching, but there you are going to interpret in a different way. In an ethical point of view, how to interpret. That's why there is some affinity for the ethics and the uh, values in public administration and the probity in governance. These are common for paper number two and paper number four. But you find their own the structures. Theory you are going to learn there, but here you are going to see from ethics point of view. Okay, RTI. RTI you are going to see whether RTI is really functioning, how it will be very useful for you. So that will be practical purposes we are going to study here. Citizen charters, there the structure will be there. But how citizen charter is very important from as a tool for the common man to get justice. So we are going to see from ethics point of view. So common things are there. In the paper number one, two, three, you find some common issues. But we are going to study them from ethics point of view. There you study from general point of view. That's the difference between these two. Okay. So common things are there. So you cannot say that subject can be sliced into different compartments. No. They spill into other things also. For example, when we talk about uh, the social, uh, that's called the justice, social justice is a part of ethics. Because why social justice was brought under the constitution? Indian constitution is leaning towards weaker sections of the society. Why? Because of ethics. There is an administration known as governance, good governance, and ethical governance. Why these three? Governance is a process of 
how we are going to administer the acts. Good governance means you are going to maintain certain yardsticks like uh, transparency, like uh, fairness. You are going by certain principles. That's called the uh, good governance. But what is ethical governance? Ethical governance is you are going to lean towards the weaker sections. For example, equality is very important for good governance. Social justice is very important for ethical governance. So there is a big difference. So what's important is you are going to see them as the structural aspects as far as the paper number two is concerned, but paper number four is uh, more of a uh, practical side, ethical side. But of course, a few commonalities are there in paper two and paper four. But the rest of the thing is totally different. That's why don't matter the impression that a person of public administration is going to give justice for the ethics paper. Very tough, very difficult, because this can be dealt by a person with a different uh, perspective altogether. If that is the thing, then the, there is no point in uh, duplicating the syllabus for paper over two and paper four, but they are different. Okay. Any more questions, please? Thank you very much for your kind patience and uh, your participation here. And it's a pleasure to meet you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, yeah. Now you may go, please.